come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Hello, kitties, and welcome to the latest episode of Saturday Night Freak Show Podcast. I was just about to say, because of your sickness, you're getting really the, the low, deep, sexy Colin, and then you did that. Yeah. <laughs> Throw and a, you became even sexier. Uh, I can't gonna, do the Are you throw in a giggle? I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> that's about as good as I can oh, do. That's not bad. Uh, not bad. Not bad. Uh, this is all in celebration, of course. Uh, so, hey, we're a uh, movie review podcast. comes your way every Saturday. Please, wherever you found us, give us a like, a star rating, or a, or a review, because all of that stuff helps us get found by other folks like you. We'd love to hear from you. We'll tell you how you can get a hold of us later in Igor's mailbag. We bring out the mail. But first of all, we should probably introduce ourselves. We are the Internet Radio Superstars. Holly. Michaela. Sean. And I'm Colin. And tonight we watched a movie that was chosen by... Sean. What did we watch tonight? Uh, we watched Tales from the Crypt, Demon Knight. From the year. 1995. Directed by... Ernest Dickerson. Ah. All right. <laughs> well, that's a whole lot to unpack right there. You might there. know him. From... Mm -hmm. Uh, well, he was uh, he's been uh, Spike Lee's cinematographer for a long time. Okay, um, he's also directed uh, a few well, of his own he's, movies. He stopped when he became a director, right? Uh, yeah, I he think has so. been a But he did like six of his movies. Yeah, all the way up that. through Malcolm X. I think was yeah. the last one that he did. So. He did a bunch. Yeah, and then he started directing these movies. Uh, he directed the infamous Bones. Yeah, the Snoop Dogg Bones. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. That we'll have to watch sometime he, down he, here because it keeps getting brought up. He worked for Spike Lee, and then at some point he just determined, you know what? I'm actually a horror guy at mm -hmm. heart. And then he went into like, yeah, because I saw he did a couple episodes of uh, Masters of Horror, yep. right? And a uh, number of episodes of one of my favorite shows, Dexter. Yeah, right. awesome. Uh, Love it. He's Walking done a bunch Dead. Of TV, yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah. if it's a horror thing, generally yeah. Ernest Dickerson will eventually find mm -hmm. his way there. Indeed. Um, yeah, so uh, Tales from the Crypt, I know that we just did an episode on Creep Show. We talked a lot about the Tales from the Crypt comics. Um, mm -hmm. We also did an episode on the Tales from the Crypt movie uh, that was made in the 70s. Yes, we did. Yes, we did. But this is the feature film extension of the Tales from the Crypt television show. Yes. Uh, the Crypt Keeper us. makes his debut on the Freak yeah. Show. Yeah, <laughs> right? Finally, about Finally. time. Finally. Uh -huh. So where'd this guy come about? Like, what's the whole, what do you know about this? Uh, uh, I mean, I know that Tales from the Crypt is an EC Comics uh, invention, uh, more so in line with um, the movie we watched, the 70s movie. Yeah. Well, I mean, that was the inspiration for that, right? Right, then, yeah. Uh, Creep Show. That's right. You weren't here for Creep I was, Show. That's why. Was yeah. Not. Uh, I was not here for Creep Show. <laughs> so I didn't get this. I didn't get this out of me. Oh wow! Okay, all right, all right. <laughs> Maybe I would have, but uh, I figured it's the uh, it's the 25th anniversary of Demon of this Knight. movie. Yes, yeah. Demon Knight, which for the longest time, up until recently, <laughs> I will even say, the night in Demon Knight thought it was night. Not gonna yeah. lie, even like, though it's spelled Demon with Knight, a K. I. You I never thought about never that? Never looked. I, I never oh, just spelled, it. spelled it and I for the longest time. No, I agree. I've never, I don't know if I've never just never seen it spelled out anywhere or what. I but never paid attention I, I went to it? To, after you said we were watching, I went to Google it and I totally yeah. spelled it wrong. I was like, oh shit, I never realized. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's like, night of demons. Oh, yeah. no, no. It's like point break. Yeah. It's yeah. demon night, not demon night. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, yeah. So we're back to the whole point break problem, which mm -hmm. that's all me, I guess. I have a problem with these titles. Sometimes. Well, point break is, there's no other word it could be. I, I, well, I'm not really emphasis. seeing your comparison yeah, It's the there. emphasis. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. But, but he's talking about two different <laughs> yeah, words yeah. entirely. Right. That have but, two completely different meanings. Well, that's a whole, dis the point break discussion we've had. And that's yeah. a... <laughs> I think so, that was prior to. Yeah, but, it was, but yeah, yeah. It's not. You can't confuse break with the unless you're. Are you confusing it with B R A K E? No, 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 no. It <laughs> wasn't confusing the it words. Was? It was like he said, the emphasis. Yeah, it's uh, it's a uh, point break, not point break. There you go. Well, I'm glad we That's cleared that up. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, three long time listeners, you know what we're talking there. about. So yeah, EC Comics was around in the the 50s, uh, and then it was uh, shut down, and then. These, uh, I think, actually, I heard um, the way that it was actually Walter Hill. Anybody familiar with, you know, who yeah. Walter Hill is the director? Mm -hmm. 
Um, he was working on, I think they said he was around the streets of fire time, right? Okay. The streets of fire. You remember from yeah. the Saturday night freak show podcast. Um, he, you know, was like, it's creep show movies on It's doing really well. And I remember when, uh, there were these comics way back in the day. And so he, and, uh, I believe it was Gilbert Adler, right. Mm-hmm. Uh, said, Hey, we should buy this and figure out something to do with it. And so over the years, uh, they, I mean, these are these guys were pretty big Hollywood producers, and then they added um, Richard Donner, the director, right of Superman and The Omen and Lethal Weapon, mm-hmm. and then they were able to add uh, Joel Silver, I think, through him, Uber Joel, producer Joel Silver, and yeah. I think he was the guy who actually really got it going, and then they were able to bring in Robert Zemeckis. I was, gonna say, also. I was surprised <laughs> to see Robert Zemeckis was a producer on this. Mm-hmm. I um, Joel Silver didn't surprise me, but yeah. Zemeckis surprised me. Well, I've always thought like. Because I'm like, who you know really carries the 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 spirit or the the if I was this feels like a Joel Silver movie to me. Yeah, that's like, what I was like. I wasn't surprised by yeah, that at all. Right? Yeah, and that's why like after um you know the Tales from the Crypt folded, he kind of kept that exact same thing going with Dark Castle, mm. right? His little Dark Castle productions because they all seem like they're kind of the same thing it's like it's a it's a decent budget like mid-budget movie horror movies done on like one set but Mm -hmm. the set is like this big expansive thing that's designed all to help Mm -hmm. in this case it's a hotel yes former former church former church church. when all the stained glass and crosses everywhere with the lucky them the exception of the stained glass windows it did not look like a church no, it's an it's an odd church. Well, it's yeah. in a mission because this uh, movie mission, takes yes. place in like uh, New Mexico, right? Yes. So okay, I guess that makes sense. Wormwood, New Mexico. Yeah, yeah. Right? There you go. Because somebody somewhere is like reading prophecies yes. about the end of the world. <laughs> um so the Tales from the Crypt TV show becomes this huge thing that uh, everybody in Hollywood wants to be a part of. Um the directors on to, and the actors that were on that show. It was on HBO for, what, 89 to 90? Seven seasons, yeah. So 89 to 96, the year after this came out, was the last season of Tales from the Crypt, the TV show. But, like, everybody was on that. Everybody. Tom thing. Hanks was on that thing. He Did he direct one? Uh, I, I think he was in one. I don't know if he directed one. I'm trying to think which Not one sure. he was in. I thought he directed. I know Michael J. Fox he may directed have. one. Arnold Schwarzenegger directed yes, one. Yes, that was his directorial debut yeah, they for just Arnold Schwarzenegger. Like, yeah, come on. <laughs> yeah. Do a Tales from the Crypt episode. Yeah. And it had star, like big movie stars. I kind of admire that spirit. Yeah. It's like everyone, come on in. You know? Sure. I kind of like it. <laughs> this is the lark that we're kind of doing. We have a puppet who hosts the show. We don't think you can fuck it up that bad. Right? So. Yeah. Yeah, the I mean I guess that's the thing that, that that maybe it comes from EC Comics. I don't know the idea of the horror host, mm. right? A good horror host. And I mean, when you look back at those old comics, there was uh, I think there were three of them. There was the Crypt Keeper, the Old Witch, because she had the Haunt of Fear. Yeah, right. And he was the Tales from the Crypt, and there was a Haunt of Fear, and then there was the Vault Keeper. Yes, from absolutely. the Vault of Horror. Um, but in the comics, they were just like, I don't know. I mean, they look like, you know, guy had a big nose with a wart on it and, you know, long white hair or whatever. Mm-hmm. But when they came around to doing this, it was a radical redesign, this puppet thing, mm-hmm. um, that became like an icon of, uh, the nineties. Yeah. Yes. Um, did, what, did you see Tales from Crypto when it was on HBO, or did you guys see it later? Have you seen I did. the TV show? I used I've to watch seen it like a handful of episodes. Did you see it on HBO? Because no, it was I've, on syndication for a while. I didn't have cable growing up, so I didn't see what this until on? I was like well into high school. Was it on USA? Uh, yeah. Here it was on the local Fox. Affiliate. I was going to say it was on was Fox. It on Fox? Yeah. Oh, wait, okay. it was Fox. It was on Fox. Yeah, it was like after, it was before Mad TV on a Saturday yeah, night or something. Yeah, like, it was on like after nine o'clock. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It would have to be. Yeah. yeah. That's right. Yeah. Shit. Yeah, in the, in the uh, like the secondary run where they cut all the gore, swearing, nudity, yeah. and sex. Which is, right. which is how I saw it. Oh, there you go. Okay. Okay. Because <laughs> mm. I remember thinking even as a kid, I was like, oh, well, what's the big deal? Yeah. Right? It's not so bad. Did you like them when you saw them as a kid? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I distinctly remember Joe Pesci getting chainsawed in half. I think that was Joel Silver's uh, episode. That was what yeah? he directed. Because oh, he got to episode. direct, too. You of know? course. I mean, why not? Why not? Um, yeah, well, um, 
so the, th- the the show was kind of running out, I guess, but at the time that this, you know, it had been on for a while. Maybe yeah. The jump to a big screen theatrical um, version of it. Um, what do you know about uh, how this movie came about? You got any? Uh, uh, I know the script was bouncing around for a long time. I think maybe towards the beginning of the series, like 89. Um, it went through a lot of people. Um, I think it ended up with uh, Mary Lambert at one point. Well, it started off, it was offered to Tom Holland. Right. He was going to do it after as a follow-up to Child's Play. Mm-hmm. Which, which would have had, I think Chris Sarandon would have been the, the collector. Okay. Was he talking about Val Kilmer as a breaker? I can't remember who he wanted. Oh, I don't remember that. That would that makes sense. Yeah. And then Mary Lambert. Mary Lambert got it. Well, this is the thing. It's like Tom Holland was like, here, you wanted, you know, he'd done uh, Child's Didn't Play. Didn't they all go do bombs Fortnite. instead of doing yeah. this movie? He did Fatal Beauty. Anybody remember that? With no. uh, uh, Whoopi nope. Goldberg and Sam Elliott. That, Whoa. Wow. Whoa. Wow. Yeah. You just said all the words. Oh, yeah. Flopped. Huge. That sounds horrible. That and sounds then, really bad. And then Mary Lambert uh, turned this down, I think, to go do uh, Pet Cemetery, Pet Cemetery 2, Cemetery two. <laughs> which we know how Oof. that went. Yeah. Um, and so eventually, so it was not written as a Tales from the Crypt um, movie. No. Because the show was all based on, uh, you know. EC Comics. Yeah, stories, stories that everything. were in the comics. Yes, this was not. So this was one of several uh, screenplays, which were all like, they were trying to go, you know, like, what can we make for the Tales from the Crypt movie? Mm -hmm. And rumor has it, I don't know. This was, somebody said this, uh, it wasn't Robert Rodriguez who said it, but they were saying like From Dusk Till Dawn Mm. was like one of the scripts that at one point was, they were thinking about doing. They had one called. Um, Didn't that come it? out the year after this? It did. Yeah. Okay. And we're, we'll have to talk about a little bit of uh, from dusk till dawn as we go into uh, this. Yeah. Episode. Um. But there was also one called like what, what the what did they say at the end of this? There's like uh, a teaser. Dead easy. That. Dead easy, which became Fat Tuesday. Right. Which never got made. And then there Body was another. Count? One. Yeah. What was the other one? Yeah. And I heard at one point the Frighteners was also Ooh. started as a yeah. crypt movie. I can see that. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense, actually. They all have that, f- that even that's got this feel to it. Yeah, because doesn't Zemeckis produce the fright? Yes, he mm-hmm. did. Yeah. So, so all of these things are being considered, and they eventually said Demon Knight. Yeah, that seems to them like the most viable. And I think the script finally ended up back on Joel Silver's desk. And he's the one who really gave it the go and gave it the push to get this it done. This is a Tales from the Crypt story. <laughs> was this theatrically released? Oh yeah, yes. I was there opening okay. night. It was packed, <laughs> packed. This is yeah. back in the days when you had theaters that had like six hundred people in them or whatever. It Jesus, was a, yeah, it was a riot. No, I, no, I a, remember this being like a big. There was a big marketing push for this movie. It was all over MTV, and there was yeah. like a whole Crypt Keeper on the red carpet scenario. Yeah. Like this was a big deal. Yeah, big push for this one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the Crypt Keeper um, was a, a puppet designed by Kevin Yeager. Who did uh, uh, the Freddy Krueger makeup, mm. and uh, he designed Chucky. Yes. Yeah, I mean, he's all over the place. Trick or treat. Yeah, I'm just throwing it out there. Um, <laughs> there's, so. there's the, all right, <laughs> ding. There's the mention of trick or treat. <laughs> um, yeah, when you sign up for our fan club, we say what movie is. Um, that's that's part of our bingo, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. Easily. <laughs> Might as well be a free space at this point. <laughs> but it's voiced by a guy named John Kassir. Uh, you know who he is or like what his... I, yes, just, I see him at conventions keeper. all the time. Really? That's all I really know about me. So that's where he, he lives all his like, Hey, I was the Crypt Keeper. Yep. Mm-hmm. I think that's big enough. He's yeah. like always the first guest announced thing. for every convention because yeah. <laughs> you right. just know he's going to be there. Well, I remember seeing him before this. I mean, I didn't know who he was at the time, but uh, he was like a stand up comedian or something. I saw mm-hmm. him. It was on like, you remember those Rodney Dangerfield specials yeah. that used to be on Ugh. HBO? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> where he'd introduce like the young comedians. Yeah. It feels like it was something like that. Um, and then, you know, uh, uh, the, the other great thing that this movie has, uh, is it actually starts off like it has the aesthetic, at least the opening aesthetic of the tales from the crypt TV show. Mm. Mm -hmm. Like it's where it's a tales from the crypt movie. So it's going to have the opening to the show with the music by Danny Elfman Yep, back in his like, la 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 days. Right. You remember those days? Yes. Yes. (laughs) La, la, la. Or it sounds just like Beetlejuice or yes. whatever. Yes. He was always a chorus adventure. of children singing somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Um, so many Beetlejuice vibes. And it's a great opening scene where you go through the house and into the basement, the dank, dark basement. Um, 
and the Crypt Keeper is finally gone Hollywood. Uh, there's a scene at the very beginning of it where we do have a, a, a cameo appearance. John Larroquette. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Who shows up. <laughs> and uh, actually, I think, I think I've been told uh, he's on our wall or hallway of fame because of this movie. What? That's right. Because John Larroquette was true or false. He was the uncredited narrator in Life Force. Toby Hooper movie did uh, Texas Chainsaw. Right. Toby Hooper, but he was the narrator in Life Force. Wasn't he the narrator in Texas Chainsaw 2? He was also in Cat People. I didn't think there was a narrator in Texas Chainsaw Yeah, I don't, I don't remember what part is narrated. Just the, the opening just crawl. Opening, oh, opening ju- crawl. Oh, okay. I think he does it again, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, there it is. Uh, well, congratulations to that, man. That would be MF Mad, the keeper Thank you, sir. over the wall. Hard worker, uh, that yes. MF man. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> somebody should pay that man. Wow. Not us, <laughs> but wow. somebody. Yeah, we can't, but we, you know, yes. we appreciate it. Yes. <laughs> um, so the movie itself, uh, what do we got here? What What is this about? I mean, well, we start off, it's William Sadler. I mean, it's a, uh, uh, I would, can we say like all-star cast? Dick Miller, CCH Pounder, um, uh, Jada Pinkett. Jada Pinkett. It's Billy Zane, William Sadler. Thomas um, Hayden Church. Thomas Hayden mm-hmm. Church. A uh, bunch of like young actors at this point. Like, you know. Yeah. Yeah, because what did Thomas Hayden Church like done? But like we all know Wings. that. Wings. 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 Right. It was him yes. and uh uh yeah, him. Yeah, Stephen, Stephen Weber. Was it Stephen Weber? Stephen Weber. Stephen Weber, yeah. Weber. Yes. Right. Jake took, was his brother. God, I watched yeah. the shit out of that show. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy. Is he in, did he win an Oscar for side sideways? No. Okay. I think he was nominated. He, yeah, I think, so, yeah. Him and I think everybody PG was nominated. were nominated. Yeah, yeah. everybody yeah. was nominated that year. Um, yeah, uh, Billy. Well, I guess we'll get we got to talk about Billy Zane. He's the main guy. Well, William Sadler uh, had done. Uh, he was in the first episode of Tales from the Crypt, uh, the TV show. Um, you remember that one? He was the man who was death. He was the um, like executioner. He likes to play death. Um, my knowledge of Tales from the Crypt is yeah, very I don't minimal. remember. Same. I don't remember a lot, a lot of, of them. It at all. I watched it when I, they first were running HBO, and I have not watched them oh, wow. since. I was, a, got, I was the pretty young. I bet you. Are yeah. they streaming somewhere? On some like HBO isn't holding those, right? Like you can get them somewhere I else. I thought they were. HBO did have them. Are they? Really? I'm pretty I sure when I had more. HBO Go, it was on there. Oh yeah, I okay. bet they would hold on to those. Mm-hmm. All right. Even um, though it was on Fox Syndication. Well, yeah, this just well, yeah. off syndication, right? Because it was but... Warner's or something. Well, mm. I think Warner actually produced them, which is okay. weird because this is a universal movie. Maybe I have that wrong, but um, William Sadler was, uh, uh, I mean, he was an actor at the time who I'd seen in other things. Um, one of my favorite movies from the era, Rush, with uh, Jason Patrick and Jennifer Jason Lee. He was in a bunch of stuff, and he was in uh, was uh, Bill and Ted. Was that Bogus Journey? Was that after this? I think it was after this. No, it was that uh, early it was 90s? before. Was ninety three? Um, Bogus journey. What's That's what I mean. I'm assuming most of you guys out there listening to this know William Sadler as Death from I was, uh, Bill and Ted. I was singing his little his little yeah. song <laughs> in my head every time I saw him. Nineteen ninety one was Bogus. Yeah, journey. There you Jesus. Go. Okay. So this was before. And okay. Shawshank Redemption. Yeah. yeah right. Yeah. He's still working. He's oh, in yeah. a movie this year, I think. VFW. Is he in that? And oh, Bill yeah. and Ted face the music. Sure. Yeah. Um, so William Sadler said it. It's kind of cool to see these guys. At least I think so. These actors get like he's uh, in the Grudge as well. Yeah, yeah that's right. <laughs> the new, the Sorry, new the Grudge. Sorry. Yeah, he's the Vincent D'Onofrio of that movie. Um, wait, is that a joke that you know what I'm talking about? The D'Onofrio role, where this guy who shows up and explains everything uh, in your horror. Your there was yeah, B-horror he did that movie. for a while. Didn't he do it in like yeah, Rings and some shit? Yeah. yeah, and Sinister. Wasn't yeah. that yeah. like what he did on SVU when he was on yeah, yeah, too? Yeah, like a, that yeah. was his whole character on that <laughs> that run. <laughs> Here's what's happening in the rules. Even in to- even in Jurassic World, he does that. <laughs> Boy, I forgot he was in that. Yeah. But then he was in the Magnificent Seven, and how do you? I don't know. He literally really explains his bad guy plan in Jurassic World. <laughs> yeah, True. we're gonna weaponize dinosaurs. Yeah. Um. So, but it's cool to see these guys, you know, get uh, this, uh, you know, like a leading man role. Like I don't know if William Sadler has ever has it been a leading role uh, outside sure of this. Nothing like uh, major Hollywood gonna, release, right? This is gonna yeah. be the biggest one. Right? Yeah. Tell us, listener, if we're wrong, or if you know something we don't about William Sadler. This is before Jada Pinkett, well, it was Smith. When she was just Jada Pinkett here. Yeah. 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 This is before she really blew up, right? Well, she'd been Menace in Menace to Society. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And The Nutty Professor. But this is before Low the Matrix. Down, Dirty Shame. Uh, was that before this? I think so. Okay. 
Matrix was afterwards. Yeah, oh yeah. And then Jada Pinkett Smith them. And yeah. then eventually Heavy Metal. What's her band called? Wicked. I have no Ooh, idea. Don't know. I have no okay. idea. No idea. Well, Haven't yeah. followed that. Too um, much. <laughs> no, not a. Not um, it not a ends it. It ends it. Scream two for me. <laughs> oh wow, yeah, that's well, it. Basically, <laughs> wasn't paying too much attention after that. No, no. Two not Matrix so movies. We've all written those off. Did she survive? I can't remember. Oh uh, uh, yeah. Who cares? Yeah. yeah. Who, you know who cares? I who cares about a fourth <laughs> Matrix movie? Get the uh, fuck out. Yeah, of here. yeah. Matrix, <laughs> take that. Fuck you. <laughs> um, but uh, obviously uh, the big uh, the big name in the movie is Billy Zane. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so I mean we're gonna get to the mailbag later, but a lot of people are talking like this is the movie that killed Billy Zane. Can career. we can we just? It, it, there wasn't much to kill at this point. Like I it, mean, this is the upswing. Like, well, this was. What, was it, when was the Phantom? Was the Phantom? That's the was Phantom. The Phantom is the year after, after this. Is it after? Yeah, this. Oh, and Titanic. And Titanic. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I was like, "What are you talking about?" He did the Phantom and then Titanic. Well, when was the uh, Dead like, Calm? What are you talking about? I, that I, don't I think know. that's the first time I ever heard the name Billy Zane. Really? Dead Calm. Yeah. Well, it had to be early nineties. I mean, I, I don't know what they're talking about. Like, oh, this was the end. He was in Titanic. I feel like that's like the end of that yeah, argument. But like after that, wasn't that's he? The in, end of the I argument. Mean, he's in like uh, that Ewe Bowl Blood Rain movie, or was he in the the Legend of the King or the whatever the fuck? That... Look, not every year is going to be a good year. <laughs> no, I when mean you... the dude's got a hundred and sixty eight acting yeah, credits, so it's does. not like he doesn't work. Yeah, he's like... actively working. And then yeah. I mean, not to mention, um, I, I remember him being uh, like, come, his comeback was Zoolander. When I was like in high school, everyone loved him in Zoolander. That was like a big deal. Yeah, but it is kind of weird. Like, where did he go? I mean, from mainstream movies, he just yeah. kind of vanished. Was it like, well, they tried him in uh, Phantom as a as a as a leading man, which he did good at. Yeah, but nobody saw the movie. I don't care. He's still yeah. in the movie. Billy and then he was in this, awesome. and everybody remembers him from this, right? It's either this or Titanic. I and, imagine. Uh, uh, Back yeah. to the Future. Back to the Future. Obviously, obviously. Well, of course. Um, I don't know. Like, I, I mean, I, I get it. You know, he's not in like the main, he's not in mainstream stuff, but he's still actively working. He does like, he's like Michaela said, he's got like over 160 credits. He does yeah. a lot. He's and, on that Amazon show, the boys. Exactly. Yeah. All right. And he's, he's big. He's a big, um, he's a big artist. He, he sells a lot of his work. He, he, he's like a photographer. I follow him on Instagram. He's really fucking awesome. I don't know. He's I'm living just, on that sweet, sweet. I'm just a big money. Billy Zane fan, clearly. But. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> well, and you know, I love him. <laughs> like I, the thing with him too, especially being in Titanic. Have you noticed people always refer to his character as Billy Zane, never as that character's name? Like right. that is so imprinted in people's right? brain. That like Billy a Zane dollar, is you the can tell me his name. Titanic, yeah. Um. Oh. 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 Yeah, Edward Titanic. Cheddarworth. No. No. Wow. Fucking hell. It is. Not even going for realistic, are you? <laughs> oh my god. No. 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 Um, uh, Har- Hartley. 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 Ha- ha- Hockley? Hockley. Hockley. Mr. Uh, Hockney. No. No, it was Hot- Hockley. 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 Or Hotley. Okay. Hot- Hot- Captain Google's yeah. Hotley. Over there People at home are it. punching their steering wheel right yeah. now because they all know it. We don't. Nathan. It was Hotley. I remember. Hockley. It was Cal Hockley. Cal, Cal Hockley. Cal. Cal. <laughs> Jesus. Wow. So, what is his character here in Demon Knight? He's the collector. Who's the Love collector? Uh, he's collecting keys. And the a world, key. Colin. Well, a key. A he's key. got the other keys, apparently, or they have the other keys. Yeah. He's after this one, the seventh key, to bring about darkness mm-hmm. over the entire world. I Universe. Like the, well, you don't find this out at first. I like this kind of mythology that kind of, uh, because the, the, the setup, the structure of the script is not too bad. The mm. first 20 minutes, the first act is, well, it's probably the strongest part of the movie, but it, it plays yeah. that thing where if you haven't seen a trailer... And you don't know really who these guys are. It's, it's like Terminator. And Billy Zane is the big you know, name. Right. You may actually think that he's the protagonist right. of the story because they set him up as he's the hero type, right? Cowboy looking guy. Right. And Sadler looks shady. Right. And, and then his leather it turns jacket out, and shit. Yeah. That Stealing, it's actually trying to steal trucks and everything. Yeah. But uh so the and we end up, uh, so there's a chase at the beginning that these two guys end up, uh, you know, basically uh, all the action centers around this hotel. Uh, well, it's a mission that's mm. become a hotel where Sadler goes to escape because, uh, you know, 
uh, this guy's chasing him for something. We don't know who's right. good and who's bad right. until the turn, I think, at the mm-hmm. second act, right? But it's, where, a good, it's a good tell that it's a Joel Silver movie because the first five minutes you get a massive explosion. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We just probably read it going. Yeah. those days? I don't know. Do we still I'm five that? pages in and nothing's blown up. We yeah. got to, guys, yeah. we got to fix this. I love I'll it. I'll give you the money. I love it. <laughs> we'll light a car on fire and drive it at another car. And then yeah. Then, yeah. Like, yeah. Right we got Hell Car. Yeah. Which is great. I love Hell Car. Yeah. Is there a movie called Hell Car? I don't know. If there isn't, we need to have a movie called Hell Car. It's got to be. I feel right? like it's probably Stephen King, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, isn't Christine basically what Hell Car would yeah, be? Right. I mean, that title. I mean, just yeah, like. Just Hell Car. I mean, yeah. that would be the, uh, the low budget ripoff of yes, Christine. It Hell it Car. Would. It's just on fire all the time. Right. The Asylum presents Hell Car. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Um, so the the so the so collector um, is. Uh, so he's like a leader of demons. Yes. He's he's he he leads the lower level demons as he says <laughs> later on in the movie. <laughs> well, lower level demon shit because there are in a movie called Demon Knight. I suppose you are going to actually have to have some demons at some point. You know that anyway. wasn't always the case. <laughs> they weren't going to put demons in this movie. They were going to have lawyers. So he's what? lawyers. Lawyers. <laughs> His henchmen were just going to be dudes in suits and sunglasses carrying briefcases. Oh. Who were demons. Who were demons. Yeah. That's awful. But did not look demons like I, demons. I, I really, really terrible idea. And then someone at Universal was like, we'll give you some money for demons. Thank you. We, to yeah, that person. Yeah, thank you. Thank for you. A Tales from the Crypt Appreciate movie. That. Let's put some demons in it. Well, so, was that before night. it was a t- Tales from the Crypt movie? The, the, like when it was just demon night? I'm sure it was. So Cal Hotley is the, the demon knight, right? Yes. No, yeah. I don't think so. Because Wait, right? he's uh, not? No, that's uh, William Sadler. He's the demon says, knight? Yeah, he, uh, uh, Billy Zane actually says something about the demon, or what was it? Sadler said something about like other demon knights and blah blah blah. Oh, so, okay. Right, yes. Okay. Although you're right, that doesn't make any sense. It doesn't, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> I can't judge. Thought it was demon knight for years. Yeah. So, yeah. I have no input on that. <laughs> <laughs> Hadn't thought about that till just now. Well, the uh, I guess that's you know so so there are several other people within the hotel. This a cast uh, of characters. Yes, it has a uh, uh, a little uh, e- a ecosphere that's happening there. CCH Pounder, uh, who we all know from Orphan. Yeah, yeah, yeah she's gonna... the adoption agency lady that is like, no, oh, this is a normal kid. Yeah, take her. Yeah, yeah, she she's has still like alive, some right? horror. Cre- yeah, she... yeah, 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 she's okay. still alive. Because she was in, uh, I remember, what was it, Psycho 4, the beginning? All right? Anybody? Anybody? Wolf. Yeah. No. Okay. She's in Face Off. can't say I've seen it. Yeah. yeah I'm still She's trying. in everything. I know. She is, but I'm still, I'm like picturing her from something particular, and I can't think of what it is, and it's driving me crazy. It's not The Wire or something, but it's uh-huh. some like uh, cop, copish, lawyer oh, yeah. show. Yeah. I don't watch that Or was that she on ER? Oh, no, I can't remember. Uh, yeah. She's been in everything. Yeah. She's been around forever. And yeah. uh, so... She runs the place. Yeah. Right. Uh, Brenda Back is the uh, Backy, B A K K E. Yeah, I think so. Uh, is the prostitute that lives there. Mm-hmm. Um, Charles Fleischer. Uh, uh, Roger Rabbit himself. Right. Is in this movie. Yes. He's uh, Wally, the, the postman who's apparently going to go postal. Yeah. Was that a joke at this point? <laughs> yeah. 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 He's that collecting was a joke. guns and everything. Yeah. He's going to go postal. Yeah. Yeah. You kids know what we're talking about? I don't think they do. Thing? Yeah, I know. Is that past? That's Huey thing, Bull yeah. made a movie uh, called Postal. Yeah. <laughs> that was that was a, a, like a running joke in the 90s, though. Yeah, it was. Yeah, overstressed yeah. mailmen. Yes. yes, going postal. We'd yes. go postal and kill everybody at the, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, that's dark. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Uh, he has unrequited love for the, the prostitute. Mm-hmm. Cordelia. Um, yes. Then you got Thomas Hayden Church. Who's wearing one of your shirts, Michaela? I know, like, it's a mesh shirt. To, a mesh tank top with yeah. a Hawaiian shirt over it. In 1995. Well, see, that's this how he improved the 80s more. by putting the Hawaiian shirt over the top right. of the mesh shirt. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's like, uh, his name is Roach. Yeah. He's an asshole. I that's all like you need to know. He's a mechanic yeah. in town or some shit. I feel like there's a mechanic shop connected to that diner. And he just works there. Yeah, I don't want. I just feel like really that's see, it. See, like uh, much of this quote unquote town. Yeah. He is crazy thin in this movie. Like I didn't ever realize there was a point in his life he was that skinny. Yeah, we He's were got all a big head. Ones. It doesn't fit. Well, but just like think about what he looks like. I mean, I know he bulked up for Spider Man Three, but right. like. That's like that's the same person. He's like, just he's yeah. generally a, he feels like he's just a big guy. Yeah, he's I don't. Tall, he's really thin. I don't like seeing him young. No, is that weird? It's because his, his face hair? is the same. It's 
on a younger oh, body. That I want. It's weird, right? Yeah. His yeah. face has always looked That's the same. That's what it is. But I, I don't know. He's more like grizzled now that he's older, and it looks it looks better. He grew into his face. Yeah, yeah. Right. Maybe that's it. Right, yeah. Maybe he's that's had an old it. man face since he was you know, probably eighteen, and he finally grew into it. Yeah, maybe that's just, maybe that's it. Yeah, that's why I was wondering what yeah. was off about him. Yeah. I thought his yeah. head was just larger he than the rest like, of them. But and he's got long hair. You he know, does you know, on that old man face. Yes, but like what? George of the Jungle is like what two, three years <laughs> after this, uh, and he looks completely know. different in that compared to this movie. He does. It looks off much footing. older. You're like right. much older. Like, it looks the like they the used the same decide. like de aging effects that they used on Robert yeah. De Niro. That's what it looks like. Yes. But it's actually him. Like it's <laughs> just it's just, just the way right. he looks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know. I was like, man, like he looks so um distinguished now. Yes. In yeah, comparison now. to yeah. what he looked like so, in this yeah, movie. Well, that's yeah. what it is whenever you look at these guys doing when they were doing young stuff. It's like, oh wow, you're a completely different. Yeah. yeah. Your face is too It smooth. is twenty five years ago. Yeah. Thanks mm-hmm. a lot, Sean, for reminding us. Mm-hmm. Twenty five years ago. <laughs> you were old. there at the premiere, right? You were there at the premiere. Um also Dick Miller. Dick uh, Miller. Fabulous hey. character actor Dick Miller has yes. been around since well, he's dead now, unfortunately. Yeah. Mm-hmm. God rest his soul. But he got his start with Roger Corman. He was in uh, a Little Shop of Horrors. Mm-hmm. He was the guy. And I think uh, legend has it, I mean, you know, what, he played a character called Walter Paisley in that movie, and he kept on getting cast in other movies as Walter Paisley. Like, he would just show up, like, he's in The Howling as Walter Paisley and stuff like that. He's in Night of the Creeps as Officer Paisley. I think, actually, Dick Miller. Hold on a second. Uh-oh. I think Dick mm. Miller, this might be his fifth Appearance one, two, three, four, five appearances on the Freak Show Wall wow. of Fame Uh-oh. because he was in Gremlins, which we did, The Burbs, which we did, yeah. Demon Knight, which we did, Night of the Creeps, and Death Race 2000. Wow, damn. Uh, Charles Fleischer also was in Who Framed Roger Rabbit, Back to the Future 2, and Demon Knight. Yep, shit. So he is on the Wall of Fame. Ooh, I never thought that would happen. <laughs> yeah, so thank you very much again, MF wow. Man, thank for pointing you, sir. Keeper of the Wall. Amazing. Yeah, uh, Dick Miller uh, plays the bum, the uh, the drunk old man, drunk old man, yep. the town drunk. We'll say. Is that basically it? Who am I missing? Uh, oh we, no. Did well, you talk about we, Jada Pickett Smith? We said at she's all? in the movie, character? but her character yeah. is uh, Geraldine or Geraldine, depending on who you talk to, depending on the accent you have. Who is apparently uh, like a juvenile delinquent who's been released from work uh, release program, Judy Hall or something, yeah, and is working at the, uh, the mission. mission. Yes. So the whole thing is is like you know, so Breaker, which is uh, William Sadler's character, has mm-hmm. to come into this situation. Uh, then it's like, do they trust him? Do they not trust him? And eventually, we have to turn uh, everything around so everybody's behind him against the demons. And then Billy Zane uh, brings demons to life. Yes. Out in the parking lot. What are these demons like? Gooey skeletons. Slimy. Yeah. Everything's really gooey Big and slimy. Big heads. Actually. Green eyes. That was cool. That's very cool. I still like that. It's like uh, that reanimator or whatever. The serum, uh, yeah. That, green. It's, it's glow sticks. Yeah. It's in their like, eyes yeah. and it's in their mouths. Yes. Yeah. It's, so it gives it kind of like a neon aesthetic. That quality. is what I always thought was cool was the glowing in the mouth when somebody turns into a mm-hmm. demon and everything. Yeah. I always appreciated that. That and the uh, lightning bolts, the green lightning bolts that shoot out when you destroy yeah. them. Because that's always how you like kill that. them. Right. You shoot them in the eyes and it releases their twisted souls. Yes. That's pretty cool. That is. They also have like a, I don't know what the vibe is. I was going to say like a Jamaican vibe, but they have uh, piercings. jewelry and piercings yeah. all over the place. Yeah. Um, so the whole thing then becomes uh, uh, the collector is outside. He wants something that Breaker has. And Breaker and the humans are inside, and they got to keep them out. So this becomes, is it Rio Bravo? Assault on Precinct 13? Yes. Be with me? Yes. Right? I think it's a little bit like From Dust Till Dawn. Well, Actually, I think it's a lot like that. I think this that movie borrowed a lot from this. Which one? From Dust Till Dawn. Well, see, the, the way that I heard the From Dust Till Dawn thing is like uh, mm-hmm. Quentin Tarantino, when he prior, when he was working in the video store, knew um oh god it was one of the guys from k and b who would come in there or something and they were going to make a movie or was it kevin yeah i can't remember some some effects guy had asked him you know like hey we should make some move a movie and so he had written a script like back in the true romance reservoir dogs natural born killers days and then it just never got made until he met robert rodriguez robert rodriguez is like i want to do that you know 
So from dust till dawn had been around for a while, but you're saying this one it also this script had also script been, had been around, around for a while, while, but it also was um, it may have been the lawyers beforehand until they changed it to uh, actual demons. I don't know. I, I don't know what the script specifically said and how these demons were described mm, back in the day. But it's a siege yes. movie. I guess yes, that's it ultimately is. what we're it coming is. down it to. It is a siege movie. It's a siege movie. They're outside and they want to get in, and we're inside and we can't get out. Mm-hmm. Um, how do they keep the demons from getting in? There is blood in the key. What the hell are you talking about? There's a key, which is what the collector's after. Um, and William Sadler has it. Uh, like we said earlier, it's one of seven keys. Uh, it's also a vial containing the blood of Christ and other um, demon knights from over the years. And so he's able to uh, keep the demons and Billy Zane out by putting a little drop in any entrance way, and it seals it off via red <laughs> set light. <laughs> 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 Which is all you need. What are you talking about, red set light? What, How does when, that keep me out of a building? <laughs> when he puts the blood on, you can see when they're doing the effects for it, uh, you can see the uh, sort of a force field pop up over the entrance that uh, the demons and Billy Zane can't get through. When they're not showing it, and to save on costs and CG and all that, uh, out of frame, he'll just drop the blood, and then a red light turns on, mm-hmm. and a sound goes off. It's mm-hmm. fantastic. It's fantastic. I miss yeah. those days, though. It's very I effective. Because yes. now you it. would see every single one that he poured. Right. You know. But back yeah. then, the cost of CG was astronomical. <laughs> right. <laughs> so uh, it's like, hey, we got this red light, and that's uh, so what we're going to use. But you know, that's the other and thing it works. I was thinking. Uh, you know, I'm not going to go off on my uh, anti-CGI tirades. But just, <laughs> I thought you were going to say I'm, anti-Semitic for a second. I was just like, where are you going? <laughs> Okay, uh, but the, uh, the I'm curious what you guys thought of the uh, specifically, I guess, the birthing sequence of the creatures as far as like, the, I mean, do those makeup effects like when you're looking at it now? Still good. Yeah, still works for me. So, yeah. Still I effective. Still like Slimy goes a long way. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, Billy Zane's over there kissing little baby demons and all that shit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's, it still it's, looks good. Yeah. Like it's, you can tell a little bit, I think it's just reverse, um, reverse photography at some points, right? Because I think so. with the puddle and all right, that the stuff puddles going up and all that stuff, but it still looks good. Like that. Yeah. It's uh, demons plus, being birthed yeah, out of the ground. Plus, I mean, all of us here are big fans of practical effects. Yes. But so I mean, uh, but my question, I guess, is just like if you were to do that now, I assume there'd be less practical, more like, hey, we can just like it look like well, the thing remake, right? Yeah, but, that's what it's exactly. Would that be better exactly. than that? Like, I miss this <laughs> shit, but I don't know if it's a nostalgic attachment to it or if it's like that is no. like that. No, that, I think it looks better. It does because it's there. Yeah. Like, well, that's always a thing for me. It's like it's there. I know it's there. Yeah, like that is. It could be real. It was actually yeah. light hitting an object, you know? Yeah. When, yeah. yeah when, I, demons, when I can tell that it's a computer, it takes me out of it. It takes me out of the moment. Yeah. You know? And if demons are going to be birthed from the ground, from green snot, this is what I imagine it would be looking like. Okay. Yes. So I don't, so don't want to burst a bubble here. I'm just, I'm mm-hmm. going to throw something out there. So it never at any point looks to you like somebody went down to the spirit Halloween store and bought something and stuck, a, you know, they're puppeteering a thing up out of a hole or you like that aesthetic or it doesn't look like that. It actually looks like a pretty decently crafted, uh, you know, creature effect. You would prefer that. I think it looks like a decently crafted creature effect. Okay, because this is what I wonder. I wonder if people look at it and go, like, that looks like, you know, something I can buy at the, it's in a Halloween. I mean, even if it does, it's still a real object, though. Yeah, Yeah, even like that's, yeah, even so. I still think it looks good. I don't see any... I don't see any like set pieces moving or shit like that, or I, I don't see any yeah. seams to it. Mm. To tell you yeah. the truth, whether anyone could just go out and buy it themselves, it's still effective. I do yeah. think there is kind of I sort of get what you're saying, Colin. I think there's kind of like a juvenile uh, kind of style to some of the effects. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, like the really neon colors and the really overdone gooiness seems very like the, is this a kid's movie? Sometimes almost, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I get what you're saying, like that. Definitely cheapens it, I think. See, yeah. that comes I'm, across as, uh, that says fun to me. That yeah. says somebody was also enjoying- Also childlike well, fun. Right, right yeah. but that yeah. says somebody was enjoying their job. Yeah. It's like, yeah, put some slime on that I think thing. That's, yeah, because, mm-hmm. I mean, the mm-hmm. last time I think, you know, well, uh, it was something that I'm still thinking chronologically in, in terms of, like, movies released, not that we've talked about here, but mm. something like Slither, yeah. you know, is a movie kind of with this uh, type of- uh, you know, effects worker. I mean, right. obviously Slither's budget was a lot bigger, but mm-hmm. the fact that we're going to go with all these gooey, you know, yeah. slimy things that they don't seem to do, you know, this mid budget 
kind of horror movie, fantasy horror movie. It doesn't seem to get made anymore. Now it's like we're going to do everything in a like a, a tract home in the yeah. in the yeah. city. So in the suburbs, you know, it's all very contained. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And this was like contained, but they built like a set. And right. so like, okay, we're all going to do it in this one big set. It's just going to yeah. be a cool set. Maybe the set's going to have like a bunch of clear, you know, walls and revolving rooms like in 13, like 13 Ghosts. Ghosts. Or it's going to be a melting room, Ooh. a melting, uh, you know, thing in House of Wax or the House on Haunted Hill. Yeah. But we've got the head or the ghost ship. We're going to have that one set. <clears throat> um, so, yeah. Siege movie. Demons trying to get in. Mm. How does... Uh, I mean, what what is Billy Zane's approach then at this point? What's he trying to do, or how does he how does he try well, to he, infiltrate he try, the yeah, group? He tries to seduce each one. He's a, he's very charismatic. He's trying to sweet talk his way in or to get someone to help him out. Yeah, and make a deal with the devil. Yes, you say sweet talk, but it's like psychic communication. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> psychic caressing. We should, could say in yeah. one case, yeah, it, it is literally is, psychic yeah. caressing. Yeah. I thought those scenes were really cool. I mean, he doesn't do it yeah. to everybody, but he it, it, the idea is the character kind of uh, attenuates his uh, method of persuasion yeah. <laughs> based to on the character that he's trying to seduce. I right. suppose mm-hmm. he'll like, let me into the building somehow. Right. Um, some of them are hilarious. Uh, I think he first goes after Cordelia. Mm-hmm. Then... Who does he go after? He go after Jada Pinkett after that, and then Dick Miller, uh, or he has him. In Dick a, Miller's favorite day on set. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's hilarious. He's in like this room full of bare-breasted women at a bar, and I and and uh, Billy Zane looks like Hunter Thompson. He yeah. does. He looks yeah. like Hunter yes. Thompson behind the bar. But just it's great. Dick great. Miller's <laughs> performance in that scene, I was just cracking up. Just a giddy old man. Yep. Yeah. Um. I thought he went after somebody because he's trying to obviously get him to drink. He's the drunk, you yeah. know, so he drinks something and, you know, uh, Jada Pinkett Smith, he's trying to tempt her with the idea of like with an R and B video. He goes after, uh, what's her name and offers her her arm back. Oh, right. oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But that one's pretty quick. That one's real quick. Yeah. I, I like that. And it was real quick. He's just like, I'll get you later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Then, <laughs> yeah. That was, uh, I liked that. CCH Pounder loses a limb. Oh, uh, so stupid. Yeah. I, <laughs> I really have a problem with this. Explain. What are you talking Her about? Her arm gets taken off, like, what, at the shoulder? The or, like, like, it's above the it's elbow. Like it's, like, right above, above the elbow. elbow. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, conveniently enough, high enough up that the sleeve of her shirt covers it. But, <laughs> <laughs> should it, like, they're just, like... tuck it behind your back. And right? They keep talking about how she's going to bleed out, and they're going to get her out of here, and they're t- trying to tie a tourniquet, and, like, still can't stop the bleeding. But don't worry. Just wait, like, 20 minutes of screen time. She'll be totally fine. Up, walking around. All. Just, just, at like, li- literally, like, nothing happened. Yeah. Yeah. I remember when so I saw it, I was saying, uh, like, that uh, uh, that bothered me. <laughs> she's like, oh, my God. I'm like, ow, ow, ow. Give me the vodka. And then she's fine. There's green-eyed demons in this movie. I'll give it a pass. They literally yeah, say if she if if we don't get her out of here, she's going to die. Yeah, no, and then I that agree. doesn't happen. She's uh, fine. And then she's fine. That's, I mean, that's a good nice. tourniquet that they tied on the... Yeah, that did it. Just, just don't write that line of dialogue in your movie if you're if you're gonna go completely yeah. back on it. <laughs> yeah. That's such a '90s thing to do, though. Mm. Like they they didn't go with realistic in the '90s. No. Yeah, because I don't think that's the the, the, no. the tone of the movie is like tongue in cheek. There's a lot of jokes. Uh, mm-hmm. Billy Zane is, I mean, he's he's a charismatic character because I think he has a sense of humor. Mm. I yeah. love that whole thing when he uh, at first is like, okay, well, you know, it's like, I'm going to get rid of all this cowboy shit. You ho-dunk, ho-dunk, motherfuckers. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and they always shoot him like that time. He was like, just give me the key. You know? Right. He was like, just for crying out loud. <laughs> yeah, for crying out loud. Just give me the key. Like, it, moments played for comedy that work very well. I yeah. Think, yeah. It's great. That I enjoy. And they all do hinge on his uh, performance yes. there, you know? Which is, it just seemed like they are just casting Billy Zane. Like, just, just be Billy Zane. Yeah. You know? Um, Which is fine. Yeah. Works. It works. It totally works. There's, um, I mean, ultimately, what? There's the sequences in a mine they try to get out. Uh, the, the, well, I suppose the mythology, right? Which you kind of oh, talked yeah. about. 
It starts coming because uh, William Sadler is having flashbacks at certain points during the movie to uh, uh, points where somebody, I, I don't know if he was a demon knight yet, but the earliest guy who collected the blood from Christ who was on the cross, as there are demons around him as well in hoods and everything trying to trying to get the key. So it's flashing back to that. Eventually it flashes back to William Sadler in 1917 in the war, um, how he got the key and so on. So he keeps having flash like uh, non-flashbacks. Yeah. <laughs> to, 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 to getting the key. Yeah. I always loved how it, it seems like this is another trope of that era's movie where, like, uh, it was kind of like this. It was trying to be like a religious mythology. Like, here's mm-hmm. an angle on religion that you haven't. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. It's not in the Bible, right? Uh, the alternate creation myth or whatever. Because didn't right. Dracula 2000 do something? <laughs> Like that too. I see. Yes, they did. Probably. Yeah, they were. There was a scene at the cross uh, uh, in Dracula 2000 as well. I don't want to spoil it. Spoil it for you. Um, Oh no! I'll never put in my Dracula 2000 DVD again. Have you ever seen it? Yes. I wasn't lying when I said I had the DVD. That was that was a true story. That was. uh, Has that been on the freak show? No. No. Oh no. Oh no. (laughs) Holly is picking next week's movie. (laughs) And uh, I do have a copy. That might put Patrick Lucier on. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) That's right. Yeah. (laughs) Oh boy. Um, Get get like the third one. There's like three or four of those. Yeah, but you gotta start (laughs) some. Yeah, I know. (laughs) Only one of them, like anybody's ever seen. Yes, that's very true. Uh, Is Rutger Hauer in one? I'm sorry. He might be. Yeah, I think Dracula changes in each movie. (laughs) Um, no actor wanted to come back for the next one. <laughs> so they have this mythology where basically, yeah. Uh, uh, so the the blood of Jesus is inside uh, this key. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, that. What? That was like I was like, oh no, yeah. you know, really? We're gonna bring Jesus into this? We're bringing yeah, Jesus yeah, yeah. into God it? There's it. demons, it's Jesus. But there's also, I mean, just a question of again, we're not shooting for realism, but I guess a question of uh, 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 the economy. Of this thing's not very big. No. And constantly, they are using uh, the blood to form the mystical barrier yes. to keep demons out. Apparently, everywhere they go, these demon knights like kind of like. I mean, how do you sleep at night? You gotta board up all the windows and doors by putting a drop of blood. Mm-hmm. You know, mm. you would think that you would run out of this stuff uh, at some point. But I bet they, they refill it with their own blood. At some I was gonna say, can't he just like prick his finger and s- smudge it on the window a little bit? I bet he could. Or Probably. go to go to donate blood and then just like grab that bag. Like yeah. and bust out of there, and there's and like rashes of that happening all over of the country. Yeah, because I mean, that. is the idea just as long as you don't dump the whole thing out, there's still enough of the magic blood in there. Yeah, to actually I think do so. it's yeah. like those restaurants that are like, we've been using the same grease for like 40 years. And it's like, <laughs> yeah, or like I have it's delicious. never heard of those restaurants. Or like, what? A, yeah. No, all of them do. Have you ever watched Diners, Drive Ins, and yeah, Dives? Because that's, that's every flavor. restaurant on that show. No. Keep your a grease. Se- yeah. Damn it. A seasoned grill. Yeah. yeah. You oh, I get the, the, I get the idea of it. Over yeah. And over yeah. Again. yeah. 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 Or like a. Or, I used to do I'm fish. the odd man out on this one. All right. I have to watch it. Like when Maid Right was around here, Maid Right had like the same grease that they had used like the whole time they were. Oh, really? Yeah. Delicious. Or like a sourdough I mean, I like the starter. Idea. <laughs> you have the same sourdough starter for years and mm-hmm. years. Same mm-hmm. thing. Yeah. I know you're throwing right, you that culinary stuff experts. Out. <laughs> uh, I'm so sorry. This is one area of my life I missed. <laughs> there you go. Um, so in the end of it, Jada Pinkett Smith, it turns out, is the chosen one. Everybody else gets basically taken out yes. one way, shape, or form by the collector. Uh, but, and or demons. Yeah. Who gets killed by the demons? Somebody did. Uh, I mean, uh, Thomas Hayden Fleischer, Church Thomas Hayden Church gets ripped apart. Well, Fleischer very, very gets bloodily. killed by, Cord- Fleischer. well, Cordelia becomes a demon. A demon okay, so that's part. the other thing. Then we get the uh, the transformed ah, yes. uh, human characters, right. There's at least two who mutate into- Yeah, Dick Miller does as well. He this becomes right. possessed because it's a possession movie. Yes. Well, but the kid turns into some kind of thing Version. with a giant tongue. Mm-hmm. Cordelia, oh, yeah. I thought, like, her head, like, went <laughs> and did all- yeah, Her neck, like, stretched really- Far. Yeah. 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 And mouths are opening up yeah. to like full body, huge mouths and everything. Like, yeah. And like it's like un- the thing. Like unhinging their jaw. Yeah. 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 It's good and stuff. It's just weird. Like watching that. Like, see, now I've seen too many movies. And after you've seen, you know, stuff like, uh, like Demons, mm. you know, the Italian one, this seems kind of tame in comparison. <laughs> it's like, oh, I see what you're doing, but yeah, you're not like going or committing to it or whatever. I don't know if it's they're playing it safe because it's a Hollywood movie or I don't know. I feel like I need to watch Demons. You guys talk about it like every week. Oh, Demons is great. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's like this only like it's I, I well, I don't I don't know if I'd say it's, it's the it's, better version. It's upsetting. <laughs> it's yeah. an unsettling movie. 
Yeah. I mean, it's the Gonzo kind of go for. It's a harder core movie, yes. but it's still fun. It's and good. Moves yeah. like lightning. You yes. Know, kind of thing. Mm. Uh, yeah, you probably wouldn't like it as. This one is a lot. Has a lot of fun and comedy in it. Mm-hmm. Yes. I think that kind of offsets it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so Jaden Pinkett Smith. It ends up. Uh, you know, it's like Breaker has been brought here uh, under a certain set of conditions to pass on um, the key right. mm-hmm. to the next demon knight. And in this case, it's going to be Jade and Pickett Smith. Mm-hmm. So she then is tasked with like, I mean, because this is like, what about her character makes her the uh, person to carry on the uh, the legacy or whatever? Um, hmm. It's a good question. She does. I mean, she's just got a higher moral character, I guess. I mean, well, she uh, considering- figures out she's. Well, she doesn't saying. get seduced. Yeah, that's number one. I yeah. guess number yeah. one is that she is able to, because all the other characters who are seduced by the demon knight, or sorry, by the collect- yeah, <laughs> by the collector, end up succumbing to his temptation. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's able to rebuke that. And then she's also clever in, uh, well, she stands up for other people. She actually, like, you know, wades into the fray in order to defend other people. Uh, you know, so she's got that kind of the warrior spirit or mm. whatever they think mm-hmm. he's looking for. And then um, at the end of it, she's uh, comes up with some innovative methods uh, to to fight the guy. This is also where I was like uh, starting to in the third act, the movie was starting to kind of I don't know. There, I started having some problems with it. It was in the whole like uh, then the collectors like trying to woo her specifically. Yeah, we should have. Like, should have been closer to the end at that point than continuing to go. Like, we could have cut some stuff out there. You think I right think. there? I mean, am I off or is that no, where it, it started? To, or you didn't feel this at all? You're like, you're okay with it. Yeah, because after it gets handed over to her and Sadler's gone and everything, like, we should be running to the end at that point. Mm-hmm. Um, but instead we get, like, a few more. We get, we get a dance scene, Colin. Yeah. <laughs> dance scene in this. Yeah. I mean, you get more Billy Zane being Billy Zane, but is it uh, is it worth it at this point? Like, do we need to have more of that? We get that she can't be seduced by him. We've seen that before. We, and we're kind of retracing our steps in that regard. Like, I don't well, know that's what I'm like, exactly Because I can't tell if he's fucking worth her or if the movie says that he he's actually... Like, in love with this human. Right. Because that's what it's saying. But he plays it like everything else. Like, you know, none of this actually matters. Right. That Mm -hmm. you can't tell if he's just fucking with her or not. Because then he just goes. It might might be fun to do this. Why not? Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. And then he's just like, eh, I'm going to kill you. Yeah. Because he initially says, well, then I'm, you know, obviously you're the chosen one. I want you to come work for the other side. Right. Like, okay, Mm -hmm. I get that. But we could have done it a little quicker. Mm -hmm. Plus, she's holding that blood in her mouth for a long time. Long time. So too long. That, yeah. Well, she covers herself in the blood, which I thought was kind of an interesting Smart idea, idea. Even though I don't, again, understand how, you know, you got this much blood. No, I think she, no, she got that from his him. blood in Sadler's blood. She got that from him. Yeah, yes. but his blood doesn't matter. It's the, it has to be mixed with Jesus's blood in the, in the container. I think, I, I think if you're a demon knight, your blood counts. No, it says he's been, he's been refilling it or topping it off, but it has to be mixed with. The magical blood of the Jesus, which I think was a Spike Lee movie. The Jesus? The magical yeah. blood of the Jesus? Isn't that what it's called? What's <laughs> the, it called? The sweet blood no, of the Jesus. that's that Big Lebowski s- sequel yeah, the Jesus that's coming rolls. out. Oh, that's <laughs> too, yeah. No, sweet blood of the Jesus. I swear to God, it's a Spike Lee movie. It's a remake of Ganja and Hess. No? No. I, no. I'm okay. going to take your word for it. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Yep. It's a vampire movie. Um, so... <laughs> Uh, yeah, so she covers herself with the blood so he can't touch her. I'm like, right. oh, okay, that's an idea. Smart idea. And then, yeah, she uh, puts the blood in her mouth. Yeah. So she can spit it on him and deliver the death blow, yeah. which I, I love had, that stuff. <laughs> I had an issue with the fact that she covered herself in blood, and then he puts her in the shower to get the blood off of her, and all of a sudden her, <laughs> her shirt and underwear are stark white again. It's beautiful. I didn't like, know blood. I didn't know it could do that. <laughs> blood does not he come must have out had that easily. Clean in that shower right? or something? Yeah. Wow. Did he bleach her real quick? Like, yeah, that should not have happened. Mind boggling. Yeah, fantastic. But fantastic. Yeah, I mean, fantastic. <laughs> I mean, that's a good ad for you know whatever. Well, he didn't even use soap. He just used water. Yeah, he yeah. literally just rinses her the off. Universal and it's solvent. Yeah. Purely yeah. white again. Yep. Maybe the blood has a special. It's magic blood, right? Magic, that's what we're yeah. saying. It's I like mean, disappearing, reappearing blood. Demons in this movie. Yes. <laughs> yeah. 
Ah, and then we go back to Roger. There Robert. it is. <laughs> <laughs> Robert Zemeckis, and it all comes around in a big circle, right? Because life is a big flat circle, is or time is. Um, yeah. So at the end of this movie, after she defeats him, I love that mm-hmm. too because that's also like a little kind of lift from Fright Night. There's a lot of lifts yeah. for other movies. There's a lift from Aliens with. People with uh, grenades sacrificing yeah. themselves to take out the creatures and stuff like that. Right. Um, That's little a good shout moment. outs here and there. Uh, but in the end of it, like, uh, you know, it turns out Billy Zane is this big, gigantic, uh, you know, creature. I love it when they do that. When, like, the human. Like, as they're burning up and going to hell, they just turn back into the giant creature that that's what's underneath this yeah. whole time. So there's yeah. a little head with horns and wings like and everything. I'm just mm-hmm. like, that's cool. Yeah. I like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like yeah, his Especially real. Especially when yeah. it's tactile like that. It's like, yeah. oh, look at they built that thing. Yeah. Yeah, they did. Yeah. That's cool. Uh, the end of the movie then takes her off uh, uh, on a bus. Yes. Mm-hmm. Now she's on a journey. Where, yeah. She's now on Now having been past the, the mark of the stars on her hands of when they align in a circle, that means that she's going to have to deal with this again. She meets the next collector. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She bloods up the entrance of the bus and the next collector's like, nah. I'll take the next one. Yeah, so there's the potential for a sequel, which unfortunately never materialized. Um, the uh, Crypt Keeper did go on, I think, after this film. We got Tales from the Crypt but Bordello of Blood the next year. Anybody? Starring Dennis yep. Miller? I Yep. And was Corey Feldman Corey in Corey Feldman's yeah. in it as well. Yep. I remember that movie. I remember that movie. Everhart, am I saying uh, the name? It's yes. Dragging up. I was honestly surprised that that's not the one Sean brought, to be honest. <laughs> Why so, Holly? Mm. What Sequels? What? Oh, yeah. Oh. Well, yeah. Eh, kind, kind of. of. A little bit. Eh. Actually, that probably wouldn't surprise me. That yeah. movie is fucking horrible. It's bad. Really this is. era is so it bad. Really is. Well, the thing, if you're going to do a Tales from the Crypt movie, I think, you, you know, you have to, ha- it has to open with the Tales from the Crypt open and have that kind of, that's why I like this. It's a, it feels like yeah. a long yes. episode yes. Yeah. where Bordello of Blood does it. It's like a completely different thing. I think with Crypt Keeper sitting around playing cards with William Sadler, who's a mummy at the beginning of it, if mm-hmm. I remember. Uh, and it's a vampire yes. uh, story. And yeah. Dennis Miller at some point says a joke. This is like the only line I can remember from the movie. It's like, this feels like a really bad Tales from the Crypt episode. Oh, boy. Yep. Yeah. Oh, uh, there was a moment in this movie where we did go into, like, the kids reading a Tales from the Crypt comic book. Mm-hmm. Um, but I like that they, at a certain point, started um, the pages of a flip open and what's happening in the, comic in the movie is happening, is happening yeah, in the yeah. comic and everything. Yeah. I kind of like that back and forth. They yeah. did a little Some bit. Some of that I stuff, like that I have to assume, is a director. Fl- like, I can't imagine that all that stuff was written. Mm. But maybe, but it seems like that's, you know, like the idea that, yeah, I mean, just how, you know, when uh, Jada Pinkett was going through her, uh, the R&B music video set yes. with the blowing drapes and all that stuff and yes. the hands coming through the, I don't know, all that stuff was kind of like, that's kind of neat. Like, mm-hmm. do you come up with that or did the writers come up with that? Oh, I bet he, that's him. It felt like That's it. Ernest Dickerson all the way. I don't know, but I mean, I don't know if it's necessarily a director choice with the with the comic book thing. That was a nod to a creep show. Yeah, yeah. I mean, or the uh, the tales from the crypt. You know, I mean, just to have that kind of. But I mean, to intercut, like we're gonna do shots from like a comic, or illustrate what's happening here in the maybe in the movie. It's, I can see it being scripted or a director choice. Either way, it's it kind of neat. Mm-hmm. I like um, it. Did you know? Do you remember Tales of the Crypt Keeper? You know no. what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. The animated. The animated, uh, yes, I do remember Saturday that. Saturday morning cartoon yeah, yeah, yeah. show. Yeah, I do oh, remember right. that. They did make a cartoon show out of this. Yeah. Do you remember the. Uh, I don't think I ever saw it, though. Crypt Keeper albums? No. <laughs> oh, well, I think there was like a curated, you know, it was a bunch of music. Like but his, his playlist? He might sing and. Uh, oh, no. Because, I mean, what Freddy Krueger had one. I'll I skip think, it. You know, it's like, yeah. <laughs> That's just what you did when you were an There's, awesome. Like, I don't, you don't yeah, have right. Billy from Saw. You know, having his own, uh, you know, compilation album where he sings. No, that would it, never, right? never Who else would today? you have? Uh, the Ghoul, Pennywise. There you go. Uh, the Pennywise curated album. Jesus. Pennywise would, children's songs. Would yeah. make sense. Well, there you go. That would make sense. From the, the TV show. Yeah, yeah, from the TV show. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. No, that doesn't happen nowadays. I know. What Those days it? are over. <laughs> what a bummer. Um, okay. So. Well, on that on that note, <laughs> on that note, did he go platinum. 
Did the Crypt Keeper go platinum? I don't know. Actually. I wonder. Yeah. I doubt it. You have to go look. You never know. Weirder things have happened. Was mm. there like a Tales from the Crypt uh, uh, cereal? I don't think there was. It I, I was thinking like that. Should have been. I was thinking that. <laughs> With some ooze like you could put over it, like the turtle cereal and shit. <laughs> Every white. I wouldn't be surprised. It was a huge deal back then. A huge deal, Tales from Crypt. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're going to go around the room and tell you uh, what we thought of the movie. But first, uh, we're going to read some of your mail. And it's a pretty big mailbag this week because it turns out every single one of you has seen this movie. <laughs> so uh, stick with us as we summon our mailman, Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. Igor's like the crypt keeper of this basement, kind of. He is. Isn't he? Like, yeah. He just hangs out down here, <laughs> doesn't leave. Mm-hmm. Brings He's gooey. Out. He's very gooey. Yeah. More gooey He's than this crypt keeper. He, yeah. might, he might be friends with some of these demons. I would think so. Ugh. Yeah. Um, so we should uh, tell you for the uninitiated how to get a hold of us. You can follow along on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. Or Twitter. At Saturday Night Freak Show. Uh, you can get a hold of us on email. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or follow along on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. Um, let's see here. MF Man also says <laughs> uh, Tim Dizarn, who was in this movie as Homer. Got Homer. He was uh, the guy who yeah. owned the diner. He's on the, the the hallway of fame because he was also an inspector in Fight Club, and he was Mordecai the Harbinger in Cabin in the Woods. Huh. Uh, all right, all right, cool. Okay, I knew he looked familiar. Okay, all right. Well, well, Jason writes in this week. He says he has been watching uh, all the movies that we have ever covered. Not only is he the keeper of quite an undertaking, that is a big and he has also made, I think, the Spotify Saturday Night Freak Show playlist. Well, and not just wow. all the movies, but if it's part of a trilogy, like a like a franchise, he's watched all the other ones in that same wow. franchise to lead up to that as well. Yeah. That's, That's unbelievable. Yeah. Well, he we haven't in. even done that. I know. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, maybe Sean does. We don't know. <laughs> no, Sean skips the first one and goes right to <laughs> yes, right the sequel. Right to sequel. Oh. Well, Jason writes in and says, it's been a wild ride that has leveled me up from Keeper of the Wall or Hall to Freak Show Historian. I've got a running list of movie titles that has come out of the podcast from Shitty Werewolves to (laughs) The Carved Orifice and band names like The Electric Lobster Claws or eventually violence. This I like. I want those lists. I every, don't every, every, those. Everything yeah. we've copyrighted yeah, <laughs> for the years, Saturday I want a list show. of that. Uh, I would love to know the stupid the shit Saturday we've copyrighted over years. Copyright list. Oh, uh, my God. God. So many movies copywritten. Oh, my God. Well, he says, not too many people around me share my love for these kind of movies, so I'm happy to be part of the Freak Show family and have yes. people to watch movies like Star Crash, Intruder, The Wraith, and Miami Connection with. You're approaching 400 episodes, and I couldn't be more excited to see what films get brought in this year just remember don't show it freak show it that's amazing that's wonderful thank you so oh much my thank God. you very much <laughs> thank you for it. your service sir. yeah i love it <laughs> that's like next level right it yeah. really yeah. is uh, what, what is your job like aside from this like what do you do for a living where you have this much time bravo i know well i watch a lot of movies too yeah i, I do too a, i watch a lot of stuff at my job too yeah uh, so about tonight's movie, Demon Knight, Mike Camp writes in and says, fuck yeah, I love this movie. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Teresa Ann writes This is like in, every other comment. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he's like, fuck yeah. <laughs> Teresa Ann says, I personally cannot wait for this review. Love it. That's all camps. Uh, Nelson Nascimento says, it feels like this movie gets forgotten or dismissed somewhat, but this is one hell of a ride. I always felt like from dusk till dawn the following year. Borrowed heavily from this story template, but with vampires instead of demons. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I see it. Yeah, I see it, man. For, for sure. sure. Uh, Ghost Freakin' Talkin' says it's very from very much from dusk till dawn, but it's still a fun little romp. Uh, yeah. Brent Zemecki says Demon Knight is so incredibly fun. Billy Zane is phenomenal mm-hmm. as the bad guy and just exudes goofy evil, evil charm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Evil mm-hmm. charm. There you go. <laughs> the whole movie is a perfect distillation of everything good from Tales from the Crypt. Grant Parrish writes in and says, oh, my God, as a kid, this movie messed me up. Now it's silly, can't be fun. But when I was eight, horrifying. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm sure. 
Ryan Handsome Jansen says, I love this film as a teenager. The budding metalhead in me also loved the soundtrack. That's pretty good. Who do we you got guys were there? into it. Megadeth. I liked it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we did kind of sit around filters in it. Yeah, we yeah. kind of sit around and just listen to it. Uh, there's some Pantera. Yeah. There's some Rollins band. Who oh, is yeah. the metalhead who sang the uh, theme song? Demon Knight. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. It wasn't Machine God's Head. Machine, Machine Head. Head. There yeah, you go. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Stephen Haynes writes in and says, I love this movie and it's in my yearly Halloween rotation. The cast was impressive and gave it their all, including a career best from Billy Zane. Gary Lee writes in and says, one of the standout performances in horror from Billy Zane and one of the best TV adaptations of all time. Mm. Pat Nowacki says, it's fun. Billy Zane is great in it. There's like a theme going on. Mm -hmm. Uh, Nick Siebel says, this is such a badass, underrated 90s horror classic. The first time I saw the film, I was like 10. It checked all the boxes, horror, gore, comedy, and boobs. Billy Zane stole the show and disappointing that he wasn't ever able to flex his acting skills like he did in this film. He had a whole, he had a, the Phantom. Yeah. Yeah. Big, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> he's not dead guys. You know, he's still working, <laughs> yeah, yeah. right? Like that's right. Well, here. Blood rain. Anybody? Blood. I'm sorry. Only you. Uh, Michael Whitaker says, ladies and gentlemen, the last remnants of Billy Zane's career. However, oh it was the I, first okay. movie I saw Jada Pinkett in, and I'll always like seeing Charles Fleischer in anything. Mm. Do we see Charles Fleischer in a lot of things? Not a lot. Zodiac. That's right. Yeah. Damn mm-hmm. it. That was a yeah. great. Yeah, you're right. 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 Uh, Jacob Cotton writes in and says, this is one of my favorite movies of all time. Horror was in such a slump when this came out. This was like a complete breath of fresh air. Billy Zane is marvelous in this. Jada Pinkett and Will- William Sadler are great in their hero roles. The ensemble cast is phenomenal, especially CCH Pounder. I've seen this movie more times than I can count. And I'll probably watch it again now that you remind me how much I've loved it. Awesome. Love it. Uh, about last week's episode, Deep Red. Amos Ooh, Martinez yeah. writes in and says... <laughs> I'm so excited to hear this episode. It's been forever since you guys have covered a giallo flick and you picked a damn good one. Plus, you've now done a movie from all three of my favorite directors, Carpenter, Romero, and Argento, in just the last month. I can safely say that oh, you're yeah. you're the greatest fucking podcast in the universe. Oh, put wow. that on the poster. Wow. See, it's confirmed. We're the there best. You there you go. There you go. We have confirmation. <laughs> We're fastest growing and best now. So. <laughs> Well, he says, uh, and aside from uh, keep up the great work, freaks, he says, side note, your description of winter in Wyoming in the ICU episode (laughs) is pretty damn accurate. It's always a great time out here for our seven months of winter. (laughs) That's great. I'm sure we weren't kind to Wyoming in that description. I don't remember, but. No, I don't either. It just looks cold and who wants to go there? Yeah, yeah, I think it was. It was was very gray. Who goes to Wyoming? Very gray. Uh, Michael Ken, uh, writes in and says, Deep Red is so awesome. It sets a tone and a style that is copied by so many, but executed cleanly by so few. His jib and crane work is just epic. I'm on an Argento tear, and I just watched Deep Red and Tenebrae. He's seriously the best. Good Even choice. watched Phenomena last night. Oh, there nice. You. Good choice. Uh, about the previous week's episode, The Fanatic, Gary Lee writes in and says, I love the episode. I will say, I like your theory about Moose's friend being fake, but will she? But she interacted with people at the party she snuck Moose into. The narrating events, she wasn't there for Damn. us to see. That's just shitty writing. Did she interact with people at the party, though? I remember her being like in a doorway at the party, but I don't remember her talking to anybody at the party. Because I was going to say that on the show. I remember him looking to her when he was on his way out and yelling her name, and she was like staring at him. Him, but I don't think she actually talked to him. You know how we can solve people? this? Let's rewatch it. Like, guys, let's go watch it again. Put it on. Sean Honestly, I kind of want to watch it again. I'd watch it again. <laughs> you said Not you were going to. I, well, I got to give it a little. Yeah, it's like okay. a fine wine. You got to let it breathe. <laughs> the next day. Uh, well, she was taking pictures of people, wasn't she? She's like at She the, was taking pictures, but I don't but remember her talking to that anybody. That doesn't necessarily mean yeah. she was interacting no, with them. Yeah. That's also be a part of his, his mind. his point of view, yeah. yeah she would exactly. have to have her own conversation yeah, with somebody. I don't think she did. Yeah, I don't yeah. think she did. Uh, Stuart Dees. Oh, we posted a, the, a photo, I think, from the premiere of Travolta and Fred Durst. Mm-hmm. Stuart Dees said Travolta is rocking the bald look, but unfortunately, Fred Durst looks like a member of the Beach Boys cover band that only plays Kokomo. <laughs> what is his thing with Hawaiian shirts lately? I don't know. 
Um, is it an age thing? Do guys just probably. get to an age and they just want to wear Hawaiian shirts all the time? I think he thinks that's what like higher up eccentrics do. I was like really John Lasseter. Like know? this is his director persona. <laughs> yeah, this is yeah, like his. This his is his director persona. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah. your. That's a, that's yeah. exactly it. I was yeah. kind of hoping Colin would be wearing one of his little flowered shirts tonight. <laughs> just based on that comment. You have a couple. Yeah, but, yeah, you have yeah, a couple. Yeah, yeah. Um, speaking of um, Fred Durst, for some reason online I saw the commercial. Did you see it? I saw that commercial yes. where yes. The, 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 the limp biscuits stuck and the they can't get it stuck. off and he's like yes. looking. Like, yeah. I don't know why randomly popped up. Yeah. Didn't even look for it. It was you just there. Why? Because your phone's listening, yeah, it's Sean. Listening to it's you. true. I, I, that's very true. It's true. Yeah. I can almost That commercial is actually pretty funny. <laughs> he's like, huh? <laughs> now it knows. Yep. It is creepy. Spy phones. Artemis Grove writes in and says, "Why does Fred Durst look like one of the Beastie Boys or the Beach Boys?" Sorry. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. It's, it's gotta be a that, thing. It's from that hat. I know the bucket hat. Yeah. yeah. I know. I know. Yeah, weirdly enough, though, like age-wise, he doesn't look terrible. Like he's not he? aging that bad. He's gotta be in his forties, maybe fifties at this point, right? He looked like yeah. a little old man. He looked. He looked. I think he looked old. The, he looked old. I, he looked I like thought, hunched over. And, yeah. It was like well. Whoa. That's the way he's standing that pit. But like, <laughs> considering how hard of a life that man has probably led, I didn't think he doesn't look bad. He looks frail. <laughs> I mean, that was it. He's skinny, and he's yeah. getting older, and he's in a Hawaiian it's shirt. Frail. It's like Fred Durst. Uh, Jacob Law says the only time I liked John Travolta as the villain was in the Taking of Pelham One Two Three and kind of in Face Off. Yeah, mm-hmm. is that? Uh, is taking film one two three to like shove it up your bunghole? Is that that mo- that movie? I he yells that at know. someone Does in the he? movie. Yeah, don't mm-hmm. know. I'm don't pretty know. sure it's that one. I don't remember. A, I know I saw that. It was Denzel Washington. That's a, that's a train movie, right? Yeah. Well, yeah, Denzel's yeah. in two train movies that came out back to back years, so you gotta be more specific. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Uh, Maya Manson says about our photos that we've been putting up about uh, the fanatic. John Travolta's arms are weirding me out in every picture you've posted of this movie. Have his bare arms been exposed in any of his other movies before this? I can't remember, but I feel like I would have noticed. Yeah, Grease. Grease. Like, not He's, since Grease, uh, yeah. probably. He's wearing a short and sleeve. And perfect. Like, all throughout Grease. And, like, blowout. So, like, all those old ones. Yeah. Like, not since the 80s, basically. Anything yeah. since uh, Pulp Fiction? I don't think so. Oh, he just got old dad bod. Well, Pulp, yeah, Pulp Fiction, he's shirtless in one of the Looks scenes. Like my dad. Yeah. <laughs> I don't remember. Okay. Not well, we'll have to remember. Even still, even Pulp wearing... Fiction was, what, 25 years ago? Yeah, it was a while ago. Jesus. <laughs> 26, 26 years ago? Can't feel old. Barth Gimble. Barth Gimble? Barth? Says Devin, and Devin Sawa is a great actor, and uh, he doesn't get under your skin like many actors do now. That's true. That's very true. All right. Well, thank you all for writing in thank you, and everybody. joining the Freak Show family. Yes. I mean, like we're doing this. Uh, all Everything that you write in uh, is affirming to us that you want to keep us <laughs> doing it. So yeah, thank you, you want to keep much. us on the air. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we're going to go around the room and tell you what we thought of Demon Knight. Colin. Colin, what did you think about tonight's movie? Tales from the Crypt, Demon Knight. Tales from the Crypt presents Demon Knight. Demon Knight. Do we have to put that whole thing when we write it out? Tales from the Crypt presents. What's on the side of the box? <sighs> I've never. I mean, done that the doesn't presents. matter because Sean doesn't know what kind of night it is, yeah, so he I could just put whatever. Yeah. <laughs> the Night of Demons. Yeah, uh, I can only go so far, and somebody's got to write the last word for me. Wait, do we stop doing? Were we doing taglines? Oh, uh, for this one, uh, ready for your dead time story? Like the Crypt Keeper. Yeah, I can't do it like the Crypt. Ready for your dead time story? I See, how do you hear that and not think that this is for kids? <laughs> Uh, that tagline well, sounds I, like a I, kid's I movie. I watched the Tales from the Crypt show, and that was definitely not for kids. Uh, there is a horror movie called Dead Time books. Stories. I believe anyone? it. Anyone? Okay. I have not seen it. I remember that. I don't think I have either. I remember the cover. Anyway, sure. uh, yeah, this is um, watching it now. You know, because I think you guys are, or maybe I said this before, so you'll have to stop me. But, um, but you guys have been bringing movies from the 90s that, like, I think at the time I was kind of dismissing them as, like, uh, that's that one's crap, this one's crap. And then, you know, now you're bringing them and, like, no, we're going to watch Urban Legend again or whatever. And like, oh, yeah, I remember why Valentine was, you know, the first time around. And then I was, like, in the 90s, I think, like, the whole independent film movement had happened. And I was trying mm. to, like, independent film uh, right. horror movies and stuff like that. And so my head was really in a really weird place. But movies like... Demon Knight 
felt like eighties movies that they were making in the nineties. And it was like, Oh, this is the kind of shit just with different that, soundtracks. Yeah. With the, well, it was the shit I was into. So right. I was like, now this is finally, they're making the movies that I like. Um, it's a slight movie, right? It's not even really a movie. It's an entertainment experience. It is there. So you will have a whole lot of fun. Uh, that's basically, cause I was like the plot I mean, it works. It's there. It hangs action scenes on it and all this stuff. But it's really like, pff, who cares about any of this stuff? But it's just fun and entertaining. You got personalities that work together really well. It's well directed, well performed. The uh, makeup effects and the visual effects, everything's just kind of, uh, I mean, it's one of those movies that kind of hits. And it always seems like the first time they do these things in the series, because I think of like The House on Haunted Hill, I like that. I didn't really like any of the other Dark Castle movies as much. Uh, right. The first uh, Tales from the Crypt is good. Did you know? I don't know if I'm going to blow your mind here. You know there's three Tales from the Crypt movies? I heard this. I didn't even know about this movie, so no, <laughs> I don't know that. I don't, wait until we get to Michaela's <laughs> wrap-up. Uh, yeah, the third one was... Uh, so the, the first one, this one was a big hit. Yeah. Second one, nobody went to see. Mm. <laughs> so, of course, that means that in Hollywood's mind, it's the Tales from the Crypt brand that has fallen out of favor. So they were working on a, a remake of uh, I Walked with a Zombie, the old Val Luton movie, and they retitled it Ritual, and right. it's a Tales from the Crypt. So it actually does have the Crypt Keeper in it. Interesting. And it's called Ritual. And there you go. I think Jennifer, not Jennifer Gray. Who's the other? Uh, Garden? Nope. Jennifer Beal. Beal? Yeah. yeah. Say Jennifer Flash Beale. dance. Maybe nice. Tim Curry's in it. Not sure. Okay. Anyway, I haven't seen it. Uh, so there's three Tales from the Crypt movies. This is the best one. Um, it's a lot of fun. A sequel you haven't seen, you say? It, uh, yeah, there you <laughs> go. Ritual. Bring it. <laughs> I want to see it. Um, but yeah, it, it it's kind of, it encapsulates that kind of like late, it feels to me like a late 80s movie. Mm -hmm. you know, it takes place in the 90s, but it feels like late 80s. It's a, like a late 80s movie that actually has the budget. And, you know, it effects to do what they want. You know, it's an extension of, of those 80s things. It's a lot of fun. I think people should watch Tales from the Crypt presents Demon Knight. Holly, what'd you think? Yeah, I, th I think you're right on that. This is a very specific kind of movie. It is pure entertainment. It's not going to give you anything in far as far as like the realism <laughs> aspects. You know, we all talked about how she got her arm ripped off and you know 10 minutes later she's perfectly fine you know it's one of those movies that like they don't it's not meant to to be correct about that kind of thing it's just it is what it is it's uh, it's for entertainment you know it doesn't dwell on the details like that and as long as you go into it with that kind of thing like it's a really fun movie i think it's really enjoyable i think the practical effects are really are really fantastic that it's got that old school charm to it you know everything is really gooey and drippy and everything is really gory and I, I agree with you that it feels like an 80s horror movie it's got that that charm to it that nostalgia to it um and it works it definitely works and you know even the like sean was talking earlier about like the the green eyes and the lightning shooting out it it is a lot of fun you know it i i, I agree with michaela that it seems kind of childlike it, it seems but I think it's one of those movies that it's supposed to be. It's supposed to like be appealing to the child within adults. You know, it's it, it's kind of like a it it says that it's it's a dead time story. You know, it is kind of like a bedtime story for for grown ups. You know, it's it's appealing to that child and everybody. So I think it's a, absolutely fun. Um, there were there were a few parts that I think slow down a little bit. I think that a lot could have been cut out at the end with with the you know the dancing and everything. Mm. It kind of slows it down a little bit and takes away from the movie. But overall, um, everything else, I think, makes up for that. Uh, yeah, I think it's really enjoyable. I definitely recommend Demon Knight. Michaela. Yeah, so I was floored by the amount of mail we got for this because I'd never even heard of this movie. I, I had no idea what we were watching. Never even heard of it? No. Wow. No, I've, I've seen like maybe five episodes of Tales of the Crypt ever in my entire life. It's This is kind of a blind spot for me. It's not... I'm not opposed to it. I was just never really exposed to it. And mm -hmm. um, so if I barely know about the TV show, why would I know anything about the movies? Like, it's, you know, it passed me by. They came out when I was a child. So yeah, I um, hardly remembered anything about this movie. Very little. It, it, yeah. So to see the amount of mail we got for this, I was like, what the, f where am I? <laughs> what world am I living in? I am so confused right now. What is happening? <laughs> and 
uh, I can't really get a handle on the tone of this movie. Mm-hmm. It is it is childlike in a lot of sense and juvenile, but then it also has like boobs and like R rated gore, and I don't really understand who that's for. Um, and like the tagline to me, that straight up sounds like the tagline for a kid's movie. Adults don't read bedtime stories. Kids do. I, I don't understand it. I don't get it. I just can't wrap my head around it. Maybe it's just not for me. I mean, you guys clearly all watched this stuff when you were younger and I didn't. So maybe that's what I'm missing. Um, but I thought Billy Zane was great. Uh, I think, I mean, he obviously had the most to do out of anyone in this movie, but I didn't mm. think anyone else was particularly good. I think they were just like serviceable. Um, but he had, he got to do the coolest stuff. So that might just be more of a character and a writing thing. I don't think there's enough of a story here to support a 90 minute movie. This feels like an episode of TV stretch to make a movie. I, there, this could have easily been an episode of television. Um, I, I, yeah, I'm not sure why this needed to be a theatrically released movie. Um, it just, it didn't really work for me. I didn't really like it. So I'm going to pass on it. Sean. Um, yeah, I think for, uh, uh, movies like this, I mean, you know, tales from the crypt demon Knight. I don't, I don't think it's gotta be, uh, I don't think it's gotta be rocket science. I think you just have, uh, I think you have your basics. Um, I think you have, uh, uh, you got goopy demons. You got Billy Zane being the MVP of the movie. Um, I think everyone's pretty much giving it their all. Um, he said some characters don't need to do much. Billy Zane's carrying the load in this. Um, William Sandler's doing pretty good too. Um, but I think, uh, like else, most of us said, it's. Uh, I think it's a fun movie. I still think it's a fun movie. Um, everyone's having a good time. The practical effects. Um, it does feel. Uh, it does kind of feel a little padded out. Again, there's certain things we would have cut from this. Again, I don't need to see Billy Zane and Jada Pinkett dancing um, at the end of this movie. But whatever. Uh, we, there's enough other cool shit happening in this movie um, to make up for that. Um, so uh, it's been a long time since I've seen this, but uh, I still had fun um, uh, watching it tonight, um, remembering all these scenes and all that. Um, I think a lot of it still holds up. It still looks good, and uh, I like those demons. And yeah, I'm I'm going to recommend Tales from the Crypt Demon Knight. It's a good time. I watched it again. It's fun. All right. Well, there okay. you go. <clears throat> uh, he said he was going to buy the Blu-ray, maybe. You going to buy the Blu-ray? I might. It's got audio commentaries from uh, a bunch of people on it, and oh, it'd be yeah. nice to know a little bit more about it. So maybe. Maybe. All right. So uh, next week, we're going to watch a movie chosen by... Holly. Holly, what are we going to watch next week? Uh, well, there is a sequel coming out to theaters. Oh, no. Right here in the next week or so. Oh, no. So we're going to watch the first one. We're going to watch The Boy. Oh, awesome. All right. <laughs> I'm oh. down. Before Brahms, The Boy yeah. 2. And you've never seen it, right, Holly? I have not seen it. Yeah. I have okay. not seen it either. Oh, it's awesome. Here we go. Well, listeners, don't awesome. spoil the ending. For the love of God, don't spoil the I ending. I might know the ending. Uh, All right, let's don't say, think about say it. No, okay, think about think about it. it. <laughs> okay, well, that's, uh, we're going to watch The Boy next the boy. week on the Saturday Night Freak Show. And until then, boils and ghouls, the basement <laughs> is going dark.